Hello viewers, welcome to our channel Dissection of Human Body. In the previous videos, we have been discussing about the exterior of skull. In this video, we are going to discuss about the interior of skull. Once you remove the vault of the skull, you can see the floor of the cranial cavity. The floor of the cranial cavity is divided into three cranial fossae, namely anterior, middle and posterior. And these cranial fossae are situated at different levels. The anterior is at the highest level, the posterior is at the lowest level. Cranial fossae support the base of the brain. The various features of the cranial fossae will be explained by my colleague Dr. Aparna Murlidharan. Over to her. This is the appearance of the interior of the cranial cavity which is also called as cranial fossae. So as you can see here the cranial cavity is divided into an anterior, a middle and a posterior cranial fossae by some natural boundaries. The anterior cranial fossa is separated from the middle cranial fossae by these two sharp margins which is formed by posterior margin of lesser wing of sphenoid. The middle cranial fossae is separated from the posterior cranial fossa by this bone which is formed by the superior border of the petrous part of temporal bone. So the lesser wing of sphenoid and petrous part of temporal bone divides the cranial cavity into an anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossae and posterior cranial fossa. So first let us see the features of anterior cranial fossa in detail. So this is the anterior cranial fossa. It is bounded anteriorly and laterally by the squamous part of frontal bone. Posteriorly as I have already said it is limited by the posterior free margin of lesser wing of sphenoid and the floor is formed on either side by the orbital plates of frontal bone. In the middle, the floor is formed in the anterior part by the ethmoid bone and in the posterior part by the upper surface of body of sphenoid bone. So let us see the features of the anterior cranial fossae in detail. So if we look at the median structures, let us begin from the front. We can see a midline elevation on the inner aspect of the squamous part of frontal bone. A part of this has already been seen in the calvarium. This is called as the frontal crest, which I have already said gives attachment to Fox cerebri. If we go behind, if we come posterior to the frontal crest, we will see a depression, a foramen, which is usually blind. This depression is called as foramen cecum. Since it is blind, it is called as foramen cecum. Usually it does not transmit any structure. If at all any structure passes through, usually they are the nasal emissary veins. Behind the foramen cecum, we can see a midline elevation. This is formed by the upper end of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. This elevation is called as Crista galli. The crista galli along with the frontal crest gives the attachment to the anterior end of Fox cerebri. On either side of crista galli, we can see two porous plates. They are porous because it contains so many openings. This is called as the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. It is made porous by the transmission of 15 to 20 olfactory nerves on each side. The olfactory nerves that begin from the roof of the nasal cavity from the olfactory mucosa pierces through the cribriform plate to terminate in the olfactory bulb that would rest on the cribriform plate. 
On the anterior aspect of the cribriform plate, we can see two other foramen. They are called as the anterior ethmoidal foramina. And on the posterior aspect, we can see two other foramen. They are called posterior ethmoidal foraminae. The anterior and posterior ethmoidal foraminae transmit anterior and posterior ethmoidal nerve and vessels. They are better seen on the medial wall of the orbit. Behind the cribriform plate of ethmoid, the floor in the median part is formed by the anteriormost part of superior surface of body of sphenoid bone. This area is called as jugum sphenoidale. In the lateral part, the anterior cranial fossa is formed by the orbital plate of the frontal bone that forms the roof of the orbit anteriorly and posteriorly this part is formed by lesser wing of sphenoid. If we look very carefully on the orbital plate of the frontal bone, we can see some depressions and elevations. These correspond to the sulci and gyri that can be seen on the orbital surface of the cerebrum.